Well, POTS is a condition that's relatively recently been identified. Actually, it was only 15 or so years ago that it actually got a name. Uh, the name itself, postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome, refers to the fact that uh, the patients have an accelerated heart rate on standing, what orthostasis means in standing position. Um, so when the POTS patient stands up, their heart will race and they'll often feel faint, actually faint, many of them, and, uh, and can't function that way. So uh, typically an undiagnosed POTS patient is noticing that their heart is racing, they're feeling faint, they can't stand up, they have no energy, they're extremely fatigued and don't know what could be causing that or what to do about it. Hard to say when I got my first POTS patient because we probably didn't recognize it as POTS when they actually came in. Um, in fact, as I said 15, 20 years ago, the label was uh, strictly chronic fatigue or fibromyalgia. Those were the, the only things you could have. Now you can have a variety of different things including POTS and of course POTS is the, that syndrome is, is included with many of the other things I talked about. Well, of course, nowadays uh, I'm much more attuned to the whole spectrum POTS uh, and uh, associated conditions. And I'm actually looking for, uh, when I take a history from a new patient, uh, elements in the history that suggest that they've had um, post-exercise muscle pain or faint and fast heartbeat when they stand up or no energy or migraines associated with gastrointestinal problems or all the typical dysautonomia things that are much more tuned now to dysautonomia and its related uh, conditions and uh, so we quickly get them tested uh, and try to define the, the various uh, aspects of their condition so we can help them to get to put a label to whatever extent possible on their condition and start getting actively treated without suffering too much longer. So I'm much more aware now of dysautonomia and POTS specifically and, and the related conditions than, than I was 15 or 20 years ago. Well, the, the, depending on their symptomatology, typically you start with the racing heart problem and um, feeling fatigue and faint with upright posture, naturally um, one of the things that the POTS patients are very prone to is dehydration. So naturally we talk about sodium loading, fluid loading, and if necessary intravenous saline. Um, I do intravenous saline infusions in my office. I've always done some various forms of intravenous therapies in my office, but of course the POTS patients need the the IV saline oftentimes. So I'm set up here so that they can come in, get get their IV saline, get it quickly, and, and uh, go on about their business very quickly. So we try to do a fast turnaround time. I have patients who come on a regular basis and a weekly appointment for intravenous saline, and uh, that helps them to function much better. And uh, so we do intravenous fluid, we do, uh, again, the mainstay of the treatment is usually beta blocker, depending on the subtype of POTS, but oftentimes it's, uh, it's a condition that needs control of the, of the racing heart. And uh, usually beta blockers are first line therapy. Well, dysautonomia is, a, is just like life itself, is a condition of change, it's a condition in evolution. Your symptoms that you have today might be quite different from the symptoms you'll have six months or a year or two years from now. And um, so you need somebody who's able to stay fluid and change therapies or adapt therapies as the condition itself changes and find things that work and things that don't work and, um, and then try to identify when they've stopped working and change to something better.